Welcome back. The visits of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to the UAE and Qatar reflected the sound approach of the foreign policy of the Kingdom of Bahrain and its foreign relations with brotherly and friendly countries, which affirms the deep rooted relations amongst GCC countries. More in this report. With a wise political vision and a sound approach, the Kingdom of Bahrain is proceeding in its foreign relations with brotherly and friendly countries in accordance with the visions of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Majesty established for the Kingdom of Bahrain its prestigious position and made it earn respect, recognition and appreciation, especially in its close and strong relations with its Arab and Gulf neighbors, based on a long history founded by the forefathers and their Majesties and Highnesses the leaders of the GCC. This was clearly demonstrated in the foreign policy of the Kingdom of Bahrain, under the directives of His Majesty the King, who was keen to consolidate and develop these relations, and develop them in accordance with the principles of religion, Arabism, and the unique bond amongst GCC countries. His Majesty always seeks to spread peace in the world, with his sound guidance and exceptional and wise leadership. He gained great respect and high esteem among his fellow leaders of the GCC, due to his constant emphasis on the importance of Gulf unity, and the continuation of strong relations and cooperation and brotherhood, and building on them to achieve further progress and prosperity. The recent visits of His Majesty the King to the UAE confirms the constant keenness to consolidate and deepen the bonds of these relations and advance them to high and advanced levels that reflect the growth and prosperity of the people of both countries. During his visit to the UAE, his Majesty participated in COP28, which was attended by a number of global leaders and high-level official delegations. His Majesty delivered a speech at the summit in which he praised the organization of the summit by the UAE and emphasized its importance in following up on joint commitments and pledges to address the environmental challenges that threaten climate security for the sake of a healthier world and for a future in which humanity enjoys prosperity and sustainability. His Majesty also participated in the UAE's official celebrations on the occasion of the 52nd Union Day, following an invitation from the President of the UAE, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, in the presence of the Vice President of the UAE, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, as well as their Highnesses, members of the Supreme Council and rulers of the Emirates. His Majesty also attended the Union March for the People of the Emirati Tribes on the occasion of the Union Day and an expression for the deep-rooted Bahraini-Emirati relations that enjoy a long history of cooperation and coordination in all fields. After His Majesty's visit to the UAE, His Majesty headed to Qatar, where the Emir of Qatar, His Highness Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, was at the forefront welcoming his brother, where His Majesty headed the delegation of the Kingdom of Bahrain, participating in the 44th session of the Supreme Council of the GCC, which was hosted by Qatar in Doha. The participation reflects the deep-rooted relations between the two countries and the deep historical ties binding the two countries. فدولة البحرين كما تعلمون مشاهدين الكرام ربما تكون من أكثر الدول شبها بدولة قطر وقربا وانسجاما انطلاقا من علمها الذي يقارب علم دولة قطر. وانطلاقا من اشتراكها معها في الحدود الجغرافية وانطلاقا من العلاقات الاجتماعية التي تربط بينها وجسر المحبة الذي أعلن عنه قريبا وهو جسر قطر البحرين الذي رفع عنه الستار وكشف عنه مشروع نوعي يربط برا حدود قطر بحدود البحرين بطول يتجاوز ربما الأربعين كيلو مترا هذا الجسر الذي لا يصل فقط بين يابسة ويابسة أو يهدف فقط لتسهيل حركة السفر داخل دولة ودولة ولا يقتصر فقط على مضاعفة وقوة حركة التجارة والاستثمارات المشتركة بين البلدين. The participation of His Majesty the King in the summit reflected the great interest of His Majesty in what was discussed by their Majesties, Highnesses, and leaders of the GCC, which gained great importance 
and was awaited by many analysts and observers in the fields of politics, security and economics, given the circumstances the region is going through, which requires unity and solidarity to overcome them. جلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى الخليفة ملك مملكة البحرين الشقيقة يتقدم الوفد البحريني المشارك في هذه القمة ويتقدم سيدي أمير البلاد المفدى بابتسامته المعهودة باستقبال ضيفه وأخيه جلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى الخليفة في هذا المشهد الأخوي إنها صورة تعبر عن تعليق صوتي أو نص مكتوب أو صوت مقبول أو لحن مسموع فالصورة أبلغ هي صورة المحبة والقرب فمشاركة جلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى الخليفة ملك مملكة البحرين الشقيقة في هذه القمة الخليجية هو استمرار لروح الشراكة الخليجية التي يطمح لها الجميع ونطمح لها شعوبا وقيادات ومسؤولين فالروابط التي تجمع خليجنا ودولنا أكبر من أي روابط تجمع الدول الأخرى والأمم الأخرى the participation of the Kingdom of Bahrain reflects its firm position towards the Palestinian cause and affirms the legitimate right of the brotherly Palestinian people to establish their independent state in accordance with the Arab Peace Initiative launched by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, which received Arab and Islamic support and was adopted by a number of European countries and in an effort by the Kingdom of Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty the King to call for unifying diplomatic efforts by mobilizing international support for the recognition of the Palestinian state, especially since the non-recognition of the Palestinian state is the main reason for the recurrence of armed conflicts and the loss of innocent lives. His Majesty's wise and enlightened approach was reflected in the foreign policy of the Kingdom of Bahrain in a way that demonstrated the Kingdom's distinguished regional and international standing with its distinguished positions and history, and this approach enhanced the Kingdom's status regionally and internationally. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa visited the BDF General Command accompanied by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness was received by the BDF Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, the Minister of Defense Affairs Lieutenant General Abdullah Naimi, the BDF Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagra Naimi and several senior officials. His Royal Highness commended the continuous development, efficiency and combat readiness of the BDF thanks to the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces. He reaffirmed that the BDF personnel bravery carry out their national duty of protecting the Kingdom's interests and sovereignty with the utmost dedication and determination, commending their domestic and international efforts, which are appreciated by all. He also hailed the prominent role of the BDF alongside allied countries in ensuring the security, stability, and development of the region. His Royal Highness expressed appreciation to the members of the BDF for their efforts in promoting their national duty with courage and loyalty, wishing everyone continued success. During the visit, His Royal Highness was briefed on the BDF's current and future development plans and programs for future combat readiness efficiency.
The first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, chairman of the General Sports Authority and president of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chaired the regular meeting of the BOC's General Assembly held in the presence of the vice president of GSA, His Highness Sheikh Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the undersecretary of the Ministry of Cabinet Affairs and deputy president of the BOC, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa, and members of BOC's board of directors and the heads of representatives of sports unions. His Highness Sheikh Khalid delivered a speech during the meeting in which he welcomed the attendees and hailed the solidarity of the sports movement. His Highness aspired that many achievements would be made in 2024, affirming that BOC welcomed suggestions from the member unions to achieve further development for sports, wishing everyone success. The Secretary General of BOC, Faras al Kohaji, delivered a speech in which he expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Khalid for his support to the BOC, expressing pride in His Highness's attendance of the meeting. During the meeting, the minutes of the previous meeting were ratified and the administrative and financial reports of the committee were approved. Then al Kohaji reviewed the most prominent achievements in 2022 and 2023, as well as the most prominent events that will be hosted in Bahrain next year. أصحاب السمو والمعالي والسعادة السيدات والسادة الحضور الكرام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يسعدني أن ألتقي بكم اليوم في اجتماع الجمعية العمومية العادية للجنة الأولمبية حيث نجتمع لنأكد روح الوحدة والتضامن التي تعيشها الحركة الرياضية معربين عن تقديرنا لما تقومون به من دور الإعلاء راية الوطن بالمحافل الخارجية ليشهد عامي 2022 و2023 إنجازات متواصلة هي ثمرة لدعم حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى الخليفة ملك البلاد المعظم حفظ الله ورعاه ومساندة صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير سلمان بن حمد الخليفة ولي العهد رئيس مجلس الوزراء حفظ الله واهتمام سمو الشيخ ناصر بن حمد الخليفة ممثل جهة الملك لأعمال إنسانية وشؤون الشباب وفي الوقت الذي نعلن فيه افتتاح أعمال اجتماع الجمعية العمومية العادية فإننا نتطلع للخروج بأفضل القرارات التي تصب في صالح ازدهار الحركة الرياضية وتعزيز مسيرة اللجنة الأولمبية والاتحادات الوطنية والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته The Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Ahmed Lim the Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Saleh, and members of the parliamentary delegation visited the Bahraini Pavilion in Expo City, Dubai, as part of the International Parliamentary Meeting at COP28. The delegation commended the Bahraini efforts at the exhibition, which reflects Bahrain's commitment to environmental security, climate and environmental issues, and support international efforts to combat climate change challenges. The delegation commended the Royal Directors of His Majesty the King, supported by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, on the implementation of the National Action Plan Blueprint Bahrain to achieve carbon neutrality. The Speaker of the Representatives Council and the Chairman of the Shura Council met with the Speaker of the UAE Federal National Council, Sagar Ghubash, in the presence of Bahrain's delegation participating in the parliamentary meeting of COP28. The Speaker and Chairman affirmed the continued parliamentary keenness to strengthen national fraternal relations between Bahrain and the UAE, enhance cooperation and coordination with the UAE Federal National Council, and support developing bilateral work paths for the benefit of the two countries and peoples. 
They congratulated the UAE on its success in hosting COP28, which affirmed its advanced capabilities, distinguished organization, and qualified Emirati competencies in hosting major international conferences and meetings. The two sides also discussed ways to support collective parliamentary work to address the challenges of climate change and the mechanisms to continue achieving sustainable development goals. The Representative Council Speaker and Shura Council Chairman also met with the Chairman of the Shura Council of Qatar, Hassan bin Abdullah Al-Ghanem, on the sidelines of the participation of Bahrain's delegation in the parliamentary meeting in Dubai. The two sides stressed the depth of the Bahraini-Qatari brotherly relations and the joint efforts to support areas of cooperation in various sectors. The two sides expressed their mutual keenness to support the Gulf joint action, achieve the aspiration of the countries and peoples of the GCC, and discuss ways to confront the challenges of climate change and enhance environmental security. The Speaker of the Representatives Council and Chairman of the Shura Council met with the Speaker of Advisor Council of Morocco, Naam Mayara. The Moroccan Speaker praised the active role of Bahraini parliamentary diplomacy in regional and international forums and its continuous endeavor to enhance development cooperation fields and praised the Kingdom's efforts to spread peace and coexistence. The two sides also stressed the strength of the close fraternal relations between Bahrain and Morocco and the development witnessed in all fields thanks to the care and keenness of His Majesty the King and His Majesty the Moroccan King. The activities of the second session of the Manama International Health Conference and Exhibition, the Manama Health, were launched, hosted by the Kingdom of Bahrain over a period of three days, in the presence of the Chairman of the Supreme Council for Health, Lieutenant General Sheikh Dr. Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, and with the participation of the Ministry of Health and the National Health Regulatory Authority. The second edition of the conference highlights many topics related to health insurance applications, technological progress, and its uses in the health sector, in addition to reviewing a number of important and vital topics. The exhibition accompanying the conference attracted more than 100 local and international companies to showcase their modern medicines and advanced medical devices. Many pharmaceutical companies, medical devices, uh, APIs participated in this conference. Many representatives from many countries of Arab world as well as uh, German authorities, German manufacturers and uh, all the best. As we are a leader here from Bahrain uh, uh, Health Industry that we are really having more than 90 consultants in various fields. You name it, you got it. And this is our uh, mission to develop the that standard of health industry in Bahrain. This is our role and we are here today to say that we are serving all the population, serving for the advanced health technology and medical problems, solving medical problems. So people are served with the best standards of health care in Bahrain. This second edition of uh, the exhibition uh, is here to show everybody what the Kingdom of Bahrain uh, has achieved in progress in uh, health exhibitions and uh, we're pleased that uh, this is a showcase to everybody that Bahrain can be a leading um, part in uh, health tourism in the GCC with the latest technologies from retinal screening and different laser refractive surgeries so uh, we hope that everybody would visit the uh, conference and uh, uh, show everybody the strength of Bahrain and Bahrain's healthcare in the region and abroad. The Minister of Interior and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Royal Academy of Police, the RAP, General Sheikh Rasha bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, attended the graduation ceremony of the fourth batch of the RAP higher education students. The ceremony targeted 47 master's graduates in cybersecurity, digital forensics, and human rights and justice from the UK based University of Huddersfield. The Interior Minister was received by the Chief of Public Security, Lieutenant General Tariq Al Hassan, and RAP Commander Brigadier Fawaz Al Hassan. The Interior Minister sincerely appreciated His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's support for police personnel and reinforcing their role in protecting national security. He also appreciated the follow up of and support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa in promoting preparedness and achieving excellence in security services. He asserted that the master's programs in human rights and cybersecurity are an added value to RAP's programs out of dedication to promote human rights in all aspects of security work and effectively dealing with cybersecurity challenges through theoretical and practical skills and tackling matters related to information security and digital forensics.
He noted the significance of scientific studies in developing security approaches and dealing with future challenges through building capabilities and meeting security requirements. The Interior Minister congratulated the graduates and thanked them for their efforts and contributions to providing advanced security services and reinforcing performance. Our AP commander thanked the Interior Minister, asserting that the Academy had developed its training and educational programs to enhance the skills of students and trainees, according to the latest global standards. He noted the Academy's keenness to update all courses and curricula, including master's and university studies programs. The Vice President of Huddersfield University, Professor Tim Thornton, congratulated the graduates and hailed the topics that covered human rights, women's rights, IT programming skills, and artificial intelligence. It is worth noting that the Master of Human Rights and Justice is a one-year study program designed to meet the needs of a specific group of law specialists, criminal justice, and law enforcement. As for the Master of Cybersecurity and Digital Forensics, they aim to develop the technical skills of the graduates and improve their performance effectiveness by enabling them to benefit from the current digital forensics techniques that may arise in the future. After that, the Interior Minister honored the top students and congratulated the graduates, urging them to work harder to serve the nation. He held our AP's role in enhancing the programs. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Zayani, lauded the participation of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in the 44th session of the GCC Supreme Council held in Qatar, which reflected His Majesty's keenness on contributing to the consolidating consolidation of joint GCC action. The Minister hailed the outcomes of the Doha Summit, which affirmed the determination of the GCC leaders on continuing action to consolidate unity in economic, defense, and security disciples, and to maintain the integration of GCC and the role of its states in upholding regional and international peace and security. The minister highlighted the firm GCC stance on supporting Arab and Islamic causes, mainly the Palestinian cause, through continuing efforts to reach a ceasefire and, the and end the Israeli offensive in the Gaza Strip, provide humanitarian and relief aid for the residents of Gaza, and support the right of the Palestinian people in establishing their independent state with East Jerusalem as its capital. Dr. Zayani commended the final communique for commending the heinous condemning the heinous Houthi terrorist attack that targeted the Bahraini task force participating in Operations Decisive Storm and Restoring Hope. He expressed pride in the commendation included in the final communique and the Doha Declaration of Bahrain's successful hosting of the 146th IPU Assembly and related meeting in March 2023 under the theme promoting peaceful coexistence and inclusive societies fighting intolerance. The Minister of Oil and Environment and Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr. Mohammed bin Layna, participated in the roundtable meeting on the Carbon Management Challenge held as part of COP28. The Minister affirmed the importance of the meeting and the initiative in accelerating the technologies of expansion and carbon capture, utilization and storage, and carbon dioxide removal from the atmosphere, in addition to achieving carbon management on a gigaton scale by 2030. The meeting discussed the need to close the gap between the current deployment of carbon management and the requirements of limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius.
The Director General of the Institute of Public Administration and member of the Middle East and North Africa Organization for Public Administration Research, Mina Parr, Dr. Sheikh Rana bin Isa bin Daij Al Khalifa, stressed the importance of the research and knowledge industry being an essential foundation for improving the institutional work system internationally. Dr. Sheikh Rana affirmed that Bahrain is keen to develop an integrated research system that supports industry policies based on research science, evidence, and the best international administrative experiences. She added that Bahrain represented by the Institute of Public Administration has been keen since its establishment of the MINAPAR organization in 2014 to promote the culture of scientific research and academic exchange and to establish communication networks between practitioners and researchers at the local and regional and international levels. The Kingdom of Bahrain made many achievements in the field of space science with the aim of creating a more sustainable future and was able to develop the process of enriching human knowledge. The National Space Science Agency was established to enhance Bahrain's position and bring it to a ranks of developed countries in the field of space science in order to achieve comprehensive and sustainable development. The NSSA focuses on harnessing space science and technology for national development, encouraging space science and its applications, developing advanced programs for space research, and building capabilities and specialized fields. The Arab International Cybersecurity Conference and Exhibition held under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces and Prime Minister, successfully achieved the Guinness World Record for the most participants to take an online cybersecurity awareness course within 24 hours. More on this report. The Arab International Cybersecurity Conference and Exhibition successfully orchestrated an extraordinary undertaking that brought together a diverse array of participants from all over the world. This exceptional achievement not only reinforced Bahrain's position as a crucial center for significant regional and global technological events, but also showcased its ability to attract and engage a wide-ranging audience. It was made possible through the collaborative efforts of over 10,000 stakeholders and 100 speakers representing more than 50 countries who attended the AICS at the Exhibition World Bahrain. The online internet safety lesson, accessible to participants worldwide, emphasized the critical importance of cybersecurity and provided practical tips to stay safe in the digital world. By setting this new world record, AICS aimed to promote the significance of online safety, shed light on cybersecurity, and foster the adoption of best practices in protecting personal information. The initiative also contributed to raising cybersecurity awareness, a key objective of the conference, and highlighting the Kingdom of Bahrain's commitment to global cooperation in the field of cybersecurity. With the conclusion of AICS 2023, the cybersecurity community is filled with anticipation for the upcoming edition, where fresh challenges and groundbreaking innovations will take center stage. U.S. President Joe Biden's special envoy for climate change, John Kerry, said the U.S. supported a phase-out of fossil fuels. Kerry said that largely ending the burning of coal, gas and oil was required to limit average global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius, above pre-industrial levels. He added that nations would need to deploy technology to capture and store carbon emissions from industries for which there are no low-carbon or zero-carbon alternatives.